Welcome back to the Fourth Way Podcast. Today we are continuing our series on the Sermon on the Mount. As a reminder, the format is that I will be reading a sonnet I wrote as a part of my children's compilation, and then expound on the poem and discuss. The seventh sonnet I wrote is represented by the gem Diamond. It covers Matthew 5, 38 through 48, where it talks about an eye for an eye and how we need to love our enemies. Rubies, as most people know, are red, and they were thought of to offer uh, protection and security to people. Ruby reds begin to cloud my vision. Hot emotions flood the depths of my soul. Hateful thoughts transform mind into prison. From rain of vengeance ne'er a caracol. Only blood can satiate my fierce thirst, another's oblation to the divine. Only when gods have exacted their worst will peaceful ones like me no more repine. But bloodletting's always unrelenting, never enough blood to cure or prevent, as one whose life is the ultimate thing can ever from their self-interest repent. Only security that we can know's willingness to give life for friends and foes. The first stanza shows the prison of anger and rage and uses hot red images to depict to depict this, kind of like um, uh, the other poem, Amethyst, that's it, the poem Amethyst. So the final line of this uh, first stanza is purposeful imagery. I talk about how the reign of venge- from the reign of vengeance, ne'er a caracol, so never a caracol. And caracol is uh, a term that probably most people do not know but it is when a horse makes a half turn to the right or to the left, so a deviation from its course. So when I say that, that when vengeance reigns, one cannot turn, that's, that's basically what I'm saying. Um, it's an emotion that kind of pushes us. It, it controls us. Uh, again, going back to the poem Amethyst, it controls us. We don't control it. However, one must reign in from vengeance and use the reins to make a, the caracol from the course. So uh, a bunch of things here. So first of all, um, using the word caracol and that we should turn uh, kind of helps you to see that when vengeance reigns, we're like a beast. We are a beast, right? Uh, we're an animal. It's not human. But secondly, uh, when to make a caracol, we must grab vengeance by the reins, as the phrase goes, right? To grab it by the reins, which is a an expression that provides the imagery of a horse, right? You take the reins of a horse and turn it. But in the line of the poem, I talk about how vengeance reigns, R-E-I-G-N-S. So there's a lot going on there with uh, beast imagery, horse imagery, turning, reigning, uh, all that stuff. So vengeance towards another image bearer of God is doing one of two things. The first thing it could be doing is that it is offering a sacrifice that we think God wants. So there's somebody who breaks into my home and I think is a threat to me or my family and I shoot them, I shoot the intruder. I'm sacrificing that intruder's life because I think that that is a good thing. I think that that's something that God wants. And you might say, well, no, God doesn't want the intruder to die. Um, but yes, he does. By I mean, by shooting the intruder, you are saying... God would rather have him dead than my family harmed. So we're willing to sacrifice somebody else for uh, for God, for something, for what we think God wants. Uh, if you're going to say that God doesn't want the guy dead, then why would you shoot him? Yeah, I mean, you'd just basically say that, yeah, I shot him, but God didn't want me to. And then, therefore, that's that means that that was wrong. So you kind of have to pick one of those two courses. So when we talk about vengeance towards another image bearer, right? Uh, it 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 is either first of all offering a sacrifice we think that God wants, or and or it is setting ourselves up as gods to determine what is good and evil. I can kill in the name of peace and say I'm peaceful, though my peace is only existent when others leave me in peace. So I get to determine the, the terms there. What, what does peace mean? How do I get that peace? How do I obtain it? Um, who is getting in my way, right? And so in, with vengeance, we either are the determiners of good and evil or, or God is. 
I also note that vengeance is a cyclical sort of thing. In the movie The Kingdom, if you listen to the, the first season on pacifism, uh, the mov- I, I referenced the movie The Kingdom there, and you can get more information on it. But the movie The Kingdom is is powerful in showing this, um, how you know, we do something that get terrorists mad, terrorists kill us, we go kill them, and then that just spawns more terror. Um, and it, it, it just is cyclical. Hatred, violence, killing, it's cyclical. When life is the ultimate thing to us and not God, then self-preservation becomes our moral metric. We see this in, in the consequentialism that, that pervades conservative Christian politics and the felt need for, for self-preservation at all costs, especially moral costs. We can sacrifice morality to accomplish something for God. Augustine, interestingly, was not pro-self-defense because he couldn't see how it could be done with love in your heart when protecting your self-interest. So to protect my possessions or, or something, um, that it, or even myself, right? How can I do that without anger? And if I kill somebody in anger, then that's wrong. So Augustine, who was very much for just war, uh, thought that at the hands of the state that you could be indifferent and, and dispassionate, but not when you're protecting your own interests. So Augustine recognized the issue with vengeance and anger in killing as well. So ultimately, the only security and peace that we can have is in counting our lives as lost. There's a great Martin Luther King Jr. quote um, about that when he talked about giving up his gun because he did did try to get a permit for, or he did have a gun in his possession, and then one day he said, "You know what? If I'm gonna if I'm gonna be in a nonviolent movement, and if I really believe this stuff, I need to get rid of it." And he said, when he did, when he counted his life as lost, he said he had more peace after he got rid of the gun than when he had it because um, he had finally counted the cost. And as Christians, we are called to co- count the cost, and um, that may mean the laying down of our lives you know, and the willingness to do so. So That's all for now. So peace, because I'm a pacifist. When I say it, I mean it.